So I'd like to refresh again for us this idea of step functions. Remember, step functions are things that we plot out where it doesn't always look like a continuous line. Sometimes it makes steps as you go up. And if you may remember, sometimes we have an open or a closed circle. So to remind you, an open circle does not include the value that it's circled around. And a closed circle, so closed, does, oops, I forgot the not, open does not, let's get that in there, does not include the value, and closed does include the value. And in terms of signage, sometimes we have things like less than or greater than for an open, and sometimes we have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to for a closed dot. So we just will keep that in mind as we go through and, and um, see how they end up on these different outcomes here. Okay, so an airport shuttle company, charge, the charges are listed below, and we see that up to five kilometers, the cost is $35. So, if I'm going to think about that, it means up to 5 kilometers here on the x-axis. I'm going to have a cost of $35. So let's figure out where that would be. kind of looks like this is going up in 5, so let's double check it. 5, 10, 15, 20, yep. 25, 30, 35. So there's 35. And we're saying up to 5 kilometers. So that's 5 kilometers here. So we can draw on our line from 0 to the 5. And then we've got to think about this. Um, I wouldn't assume here for the airport shuttle company that they're going to charge you any money if they don't drive you anywhere. So I'm going to put an open circle here to mean at 0 kilometers they're not going to charge you anything. But as soon as you go, you know, 10 meters, they're going to start charging you $35. And all the way up to 5 kilometers, but up to 5 kilometers doesn't include 5 kilometers. That's like saying up to but not including, so we have another open circle there. The next step that we go up to is from 5 kilometers. So from means including, so I'm going to have a closed circle here. Up to 10, meaning I'm going to have an open one there. So at 50 here, I'm going to go from 5 kilometers, so including the 5 kilometers, up to the 10, but not including the 10, so I'll put another open. can't see that that well. Open at 10. And then same process again, from 10 kilometers, so closed at 10 kilometers, because it includes 10 kilometers, up to, but not including the 15 kilometers. We're going to charge $65. So I have a closed circle at 10 kilometers, up to 15, which is here. And again, at 15, we're going to have an open circle, because it's not including it. But if I go over 15 kilometers, so here, over 15 kilometers, I'm going to be charging $80. So from 15 and over, I'm going to charge $80. So that's the graph completed. And now we can look at this. How much does Wendy pay to travel 13 kilometers? So I could take a look on the table and say, well, 13 is between 10 and 15, so I know it's $65. But you can also look down on the graph, 11, 12, 13, at 13, come up here, and you can see that it's at the $65 category. And we have just uh, actually sketched that on already, so that part of the question is done. So that's the first example for step functions. If we scroll down our page, we've got another one to look at. A squash club charges its members for games as follows. Six dollars per hour or part thereof. So part thereof means uh, if I play for five minutes, I still have to pay for the whole hour. Or if I play for an hour and 15 minutes, I have to pay for 
two hours because it's one whole hour and part of the next. So you have to pay in pay in one dollar increment or sorry one hour increments. So again, six dollars per hour or part thereof. So every hour you go, it increases by six dollars. The maximum they will charge in a week is twenty dollars. Draw a graph of the weekly charge. See for member for the first five hours. Okay, so if we come down here, we know we're being charged six dollars per hour, or part thereof, and there's a maximum of twenty dollars for the squash club. So if I start off, six dollars or part thereof, I would assume that if I play zero minutes, they're not going to charge me anything. So I'm going to put an open circle here to say at zero minutes or zero of an hour, they're not going to charge me anything. But up to the first hour, I'm going to be charged uh, six dollars. So if I play exactly one hour, I'm going to get paid, have to pay six dollars. But if I play for an hour and one minute, I'm going to go up to the next category, which is twelve dollars because it's six dollars more each hour, so I'm going to go up to twelve. So again, if I play exactly one hour, I'm only going to pay the six dollars, but if I play anything more than an hour, I'm going to be up to twelve dollars. And if I play for exactly two hours, it's going to be exactly twelve dollars. And again, if I go from two hours to just two hours and five minutes, or two and a half hours, I have to pay the additional six dollars for that next hour. So that goes up to the 18. 18. And again, at exactly two hours, I'm just going to pay for the two hours. But anything above that, I have to pay for the third hour. And then in the next hour, we'd expect it would still go up by six dollars, but they gave me a limit. They said the maximum they'll charge you in a week is twenty dollars. So I know that if I play exactly three hours, I'll pay eighteen dollars, but if I play anything more than three hours, I'm just going to pay the twenty dollars. And again, that's because it reaches a maximum. They're not going to charge you more than the twenty dollars. And it's kind of the same like on your metro card in the city. If you ride the bus a certain number of times, I think it's ten times in a week or something, they start they stop charging you. Um, so it has a maximum that will charge you in one week. Okay, so we've got that part plotted. Um, draw the graph, we got it. And the new management, however, comes into the squash club and decides to ch change the charging structure. And they decide to charge a fixed fee of $5 for a booking court and then charge a rate of $4 per hour. So remember, a fixed fee, this is going to be your y-intercept, and $4 per hour that per is a key word for me to tell me that this is going to be a gradient. So I need to write my own rule for this. Remember that we have y is equal to m x plus c, where m is our gradient, and c is the y-intercept. So y is equal to 4x plus 5, and I guess putting it into context, cost per time we're going to have c is equal to 4t plus 5. So that is the formula for the cost of hiring it um, for x hours. I'm going to use t because that's what's on the graph. Um, and graph the information on the same, same bit here. So how would we put that on there? Again, you can use your calculator and put this into stat, but some of you know how to do this by hand by now. So my y-intercept is at 5. And I know every dollar, or sorry, every hour I increase, I'm going to go up by four. So from five at one, I'm going to be up to nine. And then at two, I'm going to be up to thirteen, uh, which is here. And at three, I'm going to be up to seventeen. And at four, I'm going to be up to twenty-one. And away you go. So, again, each of these is going up by $4 every hour, and I'm starting at 5. So, go ahead and try to draw this on 
in a nice straight line, which is quite hard for me to do on the tablet, but I'll give it a try. Well, got through most of the points. So this is the new charge, or the new cost. And this one is the original. So we've got both of these on here. And it might just be good to pay attention to the fact that we do have some intersections here. So I could ask you, you know, when is the new cost going to be less expensive? And we'd look to see when the black line is actually lower than the blue lines. So in the very first spot here, this is a little bit less expensive here for the new. Between like one hour and one and a bit, that is going to be also cheaper. And it's cheaper here, kind of at the start of each of the hour sections. And then it becomes cheaper again until sometime around here. So we can use it to find intersections on the graph. Um, so you'd want to put in information such as, into graph you could put in one equation, like c is equal to 4t plus 5 as your first equation, and then in your second equation if you wanted to know this intersection, well, c in this part here is equal to 12, so if I want to know t when c is equal to 12, I can put 12 is equal to 4t plus 5 into solver on your calculator, or you could put c is equal to 4t plus 5 and c is equal to 12 into graph together and find the ISCT or the intersection using G-Solve and that will tell you exactly where those overlaps happen. So that's sometimes how these equations or these questions work out. They get you a step function and a straight line and then you have to kind of talk about when one is more expensive or better than the other. And clearly here at the end the original charging structure is much cheaper if you play a lot of squash in a week whereas the new charge keeps getting more and more expensive as you start to play lots of hours.